Model steam engine live steam tests. This is part two. The first live steam test of a Stuart number no. four steam engine, which is supplied with steam by a Stuart 504 boiler, and is connected to a brushless motor, which is being used as an electricity generator. Let the steam test commence. I'm lighting the boiler with my flexible gas lighter, which keeps my hand out of the line of fire of the small explosion that occurs when you light a gas burner. These old Stuart 504 boilers are surprisingly efficient, and it doesn't take long before it starts to raise steam. I've connected some silicone rubber piping to the condensate drain on the condenser, and a second piece of silicone rubber pipe to drain the lower water tank. In this clip I'm filling the upper water tank. When the injectors in use the lower water tank will fill up quite quickly and I need to dispose of this water before it overflows. It's time now to fill the displacement lubricator and for this I'm using steam oil with a bit of rapeseed oil and a little bit of machine oil which I find to be really effective for lubricating small steam engines that don't use a high degree of superheat. There's nothing on the clock but the steam's coming. As you can see when I press the whistle valve it makes a bit of a whistly sort of a noise. So all I need to do now is let the pressure build. In this clip I'm testing the hand pump, although I will be using the injector for topping up the boiler, not the hand pump. I'll try the whistle again. About 20 psi now. It's time to let some steam to the engine, and of course the first steam will condense the water, and look what's happening. This is a very, very good sign. Can you see it rocking and bouncing back and forth at both ends of the stroke? That is a really good sign that the valve timing is perfect, but the engine won't turn over because there's a hydraulic lock in the cylinder, which is caused by the first steam that reaches the cylinder immediately condensing to water. So if you're playing with your own model steam engine and this happens, do not try and force the piston over top dead centre. You need to clear the hydraulic lock, and that's what cylinder drain cocks are for. Watch this. Common sense warning, do not stand in front of the engine when you do this, otherwise you will get a mixture of hot water, steam and steam oil all down your shirt. I could shut the drain cocks when the engine is running, but for the purposes of the video I'm just showing that here I am shutting the drain cocks. I'm just giving the engine cylinder a quick wipe with a cloth to get rid of any oil. And now when I open the steam valve once again, this time the engine will go all the way around. But I've just noticed that there's quite a lot of oil on the flywheel. Really, I should have put drain cocks on this, which allow me to pipe away the condensate. But I like a bit of mess in my life, so I'm just going to leave these as they are. By opening the steam valve a bit further, I can make the engine go quite fast. And I'm doing this just to warm it up, because it needs to be thoroughly warm to avoid any possibility of a hydraulic lock problem. Right, that's enough messing with drain cocks. It's time to see whether this steam engine is powerful enough to generate any electricity. So I need to fit this belt. This is a belt that I really made in a rush because I was quite excited to see whether it worked and I didn't line it up properly, that's why it's very wobbly. I'm going to make a better version of this, which is accurately stuck together. But I'll live with this for the moment. The first thing I notice is the noise from the generator is not really excessive. It's not silent, I never thought it would be, but it's not making a horrible whining noise. I've just realised that after the last steam test I never emptied the condenser. So the condenser will be quite full and that's why it's making a very strange exhaust noise. So all I need to do now is open the condensate drain valve on the condenser to drain the water into a bucket on the floor that you can't see. The main problem is that the pressure is still low on the boiler, it's at about 25 psi now, and the steam is very wet. Even though it's going through a steam dryer, it's still low pressure steam, and low pressure steam is at a lower temperature. But after draining the condensate from within the condenser, the engine's exhaust note is very different. Have a listen to it now. In this clip I'm shutting the steam valve to stop the engine, and here I'm about to apply some water and steam to the injector. And the injector picks up straight away and starts pumping water into the boiler, and this makes the water gauge a bit erratic. There isn't a blowdown valve fitted to the water gauge. I did fit one, but it leaked. I'm going to use a different idea. I'm going to use a globe valve, which will deliver the water back to the lower tank. And that way, when I get air bubbles in the water gauge, I simply snap open the valve and shut it quickly, and the sudden release of steam clears the air bubbles in the glass tube. 
In this clip, at the moment, the engine is running at the speed I would like it to be running at to generate electricity, and it's generating about 4 volts. This is on a 10 volt scale. Maybe I could just up the speed a little bit to 5 volts. With the test meter showing 5 volts, I do think the engine is running slightly too fast. And as I wind it up even further, yes, that's too fast. By the way, if you have a look at the main drive pulley to the generator, you will notice that I fitted some different O-rings on there. They're much thinner, and they're not silicone, I think they're made out of neoprene. But they're doing the job. I may machine the pulley a little bit smaller. Alternatively, I could use a tooth belt pulley, and use a tooth belt round the flywheel. Although I do think that the nice brown leather belt is more industrial revolution. This would be a great speed to run the engine at, but I'm only getting about 2.5 volts, which is just under the threshold for the voltage converter, which is 3.3 volts minimum. What I haven't mentioned much at the moment is the boiler. Well, the boiler is just delivering the steam without event. It's set to blow off at 60 pounds per square inch, or just a little tiny bit above that. I've just noticed the sound from the exhaust, and this means the condenser's full. The engine's been running for quite a long while now. To make this video, I think I ran the engine for about two and a half hours, and now I've stopped the engine. It's time for an oiling session on all the major working parts. I've got the camera sat on the tripod on the bench at the moment over the steam plant, just to give you a different perspective. Here I'm emptying the displacement lubricator and you can clearly see the water coming out of the bottom followed by some oil, so it wasn't completely empty anyway. Followed by some very weird looking red oil, I don't know what that is. I'm going to refill it with my normal steam oil mixture when I can find the oil can. The 504 boiler is blowing off now as if it's impatiently waiting for the opening of the steam valve. Talking about opening of steam valves, this whistle valve is very leaky. I think I might change it, or maybe just reseat the ball inside the valve. I'd like to demonstrate the injector now. I've taken the lid off the water tank, so you can see the water level. And when I first open the water valve, the water starts to drop in the tank. When I open the steam valve, the injector picks up and water is pumped into the boiler. This Jubilee fittings injector is excellent. It always picks up and it always pumps water into the boiler. As you can see, the water gauge is nearly full to the top, and I haven't used the hand pump, just the injector. But here, I've overdone the injecting, and as you can see, the gauge glass is completely full, and the pressure inside the boiler is low. It's very important with a cast iron steam engine to make sure you clear all the water out of the cylinder before you put the steam plant away. So I've removed the oil valve from the displacement lubricator, put a piece of silicone rubber pipe on there, I've pumped some steam oil into the pipe, then I connect my compressed air line to the pipe and run the engine for a while. The compressed air blows away the water, I've left the drain cocks open, and you can clearly see that first of all water comes out, and then later on you probably can't see that, but oil is coming out of the drain cocks. And here I'm shutting the drain cocks and giving the engine an extended run on compressed air to make sure that all of the water gets blown out of the cylinder and the steam chest. This steam plant was very successful, the generator was hidden underneath the baseboard. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.